Guys, just a, another hot tip here that I just refigured out. Um, if you hold Control and Alt and click on one of the nodes, oh, cool. it'll show you the location that it came from. So I can hit Control and Alt and click on that, and it brings me to that panel and shows me where it's from. Nice. Right. So it's one of those things that I just keep forgetting all the time. So you should probably do it a couple of times and cement it into your memory like I have not. Okay, so um, there you go. Control, Alt, and click. Yeah. All right, so I got to get into some other uh, practice here that I usually do as well. So um, just another sort of method thing that I think will help you guys out. And, it, you know, I forgot to start doing it here, but when I was first learning the software, it was extremely helpful for me to do this, um, to start learning where commands come from. Um, what I usually would do when I started learning is I would create groups, and the groups of each node, um, you could actually title it and put a little tab up top that says where it's from. So when I go into like vector and grid, I would do something like this and create a group around it and then create a little tab up top. So to create a group, you hit Control-G. And it creates this little purple bubble around it. And then you can put a tab up top by right clicking on the bubble and typing in whatever you want to call it. So in starting to learn the software, I got in the habit of typing in vector grid so that I can visually understand and know kind of like the origins of where these are coming from. And it actually got me to the point where I started to understand, you know, like strings of definitions that were all coming from the same panel. And then I could associate those together and understand like, well, these are all coming from the maths panel. This is kind of one family of nodes that I can use in multiple places for multiple purposes. Okay, so we'll get into that too. Like a lot of these things are going to start recurring quite quite a bit. Um, and then like this one um, came from surface analysis. Right, so stuff like that. Um, this one was kangaroo utility. Right, so I'll try to get myself back in the habit of doing that, okay? Because I know that that's really helpful, and especially for you when you're sitting there and if you're looking up there and you're like, well, where the hell did that come from? Well, this this will help you as I'm, because I pan a lot and I zoom and go in and out, so at least this, you know, when I pan in and out, you'll see. You'll have like a visual tag that says, this is where that's from, okay? So I'll do that for you. All right. <clears throat> so... Let's, uh, let's continue on, right? So I said that I wanted you to be able to maybe grab some of these edges and um, begin to modify them, right? So in order to illustrate what I mean, and this is just illustrative right now, I want us to be able to um, model a pipe along any curve we decide we want to model it on parametrically, right? So we'll just take a slider and we'll say, I want to pipe on this one, I want to pipe on that one, and we can just go back and forth, and it'll say pipe, 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 and kind of like snake along the whole thing. Okay, so that's, that's where I want to get us tonight on this, um, and then some. Uh, so to, to do that, we now have our 40 lines, and those 40 lines are individually selectable now. So um, let's take a look at that. We need to do the list item first. I'll, I'll show you like this, okay? So the pipe command. Let me turn off some of this stuff because we've got a whole bunch of things going on here now. Now we've just got curves, okay? So I hid, I hid my surfaces. I hid my vertices. I just have my curves that I'm trying to manipulate, okay? So I have 40 different curves. I want to start building pipes on it, okay? So I can go into surface and go into freeform and create pipes, okay? So let me, let me drop that in and try it out. Um, I'm going to drop it in. I'll create this little thing for you. So this is under surface, freeform. Oops. <clears throat> All right, so it's asking for a couple of things. It's going to ask for the curve that you want to make a pipe. It's going to ask for the radius of the pipe. And then uh, the caps is going to say, like, well, what kind of end condition do you want? Do you want it to be rounded? Do you want it to be flat? 
And uh, this is kind of a significant thing to note. <coughs> um, these types of inputs are predefined. You can't change them. Okay, so it's going to ask you for a setting. This is a setting input, and it's going to be based off of a certain set of numbers. So for this one, it says 0 equals none, 1 equals flat, and 2 equals round. Uh, so there really is no better way to input these options other than, you know, 0, 1, and 2 changes your setting. You know, I, I imagine that eventually they'll find some graphic interface that makes that a little bit easier. But for right now, 0, 1, and 2 are it for us. Um, so I'm going to make a slider that says 0 is less than 1 is less than 2. And I'll just plug that into E right now. Okay, I don't have to worry about that too much. Whoops. <clears throat> All right, so um, the only things I need now are the radius or the, uh, the curve itself. So I'm going to just copy this up because I don't really need a radius more than, say, one. You know, I'll just stick with one for now. Um, so I copied that up and I pulled it over. Um, and then I just need the curves, right? So you might think that I can just take the curves that are coming out of, out of this. Um, so actually, let's kind of quickly discuss this. While the input here is, or the output is edges, right? And they come out as curves, and it looks like this little, this little uh, swirly line for curve. Um, and the input is technically a line. Um, in terms of what you can program between curves and lines, there are very few differences here. Um, the only difference is that the line is going to be predicated upon a start point and an end point. A curve won't necessarily communicate in those six values. And when I say six values, it's going to have an x, y, z for the start and an x, y, z for the end point. Right. So um, th it's, it's a subtle difference, and you probably won't experience too much uh, trouble going back and forth between the two in most cases. OK, so um, the Q comes out as a line. So even though this is searching for a curve, it should still communicate between the two. So when I plug it in, it reads those lines as curves. And then it will create 40 pipes for all of the lines. Okay. So right now, in this current definition, we make no determination between the whole set of 40 pipes and which individual pipe we want to manipulate. Okay, So what that tells us is that we need something within that to figure out, well, which pipe am I putting it on? Okay, So right here, we need to add something in. And that's why I moved it over. So I grabbed it like this. And I'm saying, you know, let's give me some room. This is just file and wire management for me. As I'm thinking through a definition, I like to give myself plenty of room in between. Okay. So um, I'll pull this over a little bit more, too. All right. So um, I've got 40 lines, and I've got my pipe. Now I need to put something in that reads which pipe I want to put it on. Um, and it's actually remarkably simple. Um, you have to select, using a number slider, whatever numerical value is associated with the index of those points, right? So each or rather, um, of those lines. So each one of those lines has an index number. And those are right here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down to 40. That's your index of lines. And they go in a certain order. And you can change that order and kind of manipulate which way it reads in certain ways. Um, but essentially, you have to do uh, what's called a list item. Right, so this is kind of your first sort of little like specialized um, foray into understanding data and how you manipulate it. Right, list item will ask you for the list of data, which would be these lines, and then it'll ask you for a numerical signifier that says, well, which one? Okay, so that's under sets and list, and then it's this one called list item. So let's drop it here somewhere in the middle and read what it asks for, right? It wants the list. It wants the item index. 
And it also wants, well, I don't, I don't truly know what wrap does. I haven't used it yet. So obviously it's not all that imperative to understand in most cases. So I'll, uh, I'll eventually find out what that does for you. Um, so uh, we've got lines. So I'll plug that into my list. Okay. So it's important, actually, let me go back a sec. It's important to understand when this says empty generic data parameter, it's telling you that it makes no determination between requesting geometry or requesting numbers or text, right? It's not going to say, it's not going to tell you what type of information to filter through this because everything that you make in Grasshopper has some sort of count, you know, zero, one, two, three, four. It will just take that data and start to list it. Make sense? All right. So um, we plug that in, and then here under index, it's going to say, well, which one? Okay, so we need a number slider, but we also need a number slider that goes from our minimum to maximum value. So I'm going to real quick just drop in one that says 0, less than 1, less than 40. Okay, we've got 40 points. I put it on, right? Index. So over here on the output, it's only giving me one locally defined value, and it says line, L equals 25 feet, right? So it's picking a line for us, it's picking the first one in the list. Um, I can put that into that edge and see how it's only putting it down there on the left. That's my first index line. All right, so if I pull it back to zero, it switches to the bottom. All right, and now, you know, one, two, three. And then it goes up to the next one, one, two, three. Goes up to the next one, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then so on and so forth. All the way across our grid. So then what, what happens when you get to the end? I typed in up to 40, and then I bring it all the way to the end, and look what it did. Right? It went back to the beginning. So um, keep in mind, the list starts from zero. So I really only need to go, if I only want it to go to the end, I really only need to go from zero to 39, because that's 40 lines. Right? So just that's one of the things that you just need to be ever conscious of. Um, but noteworthy because when you get to the end of a list in Grasshopper, it's going to go back to the beginning. Or you might just go to the origin. It depends. When we get into dynamic patterning, I'll have a, um, a refresher on what precisely its behavior is at the end. But um, <clears throat> So I think it actually goes back to the origin and then it's six there. What? Yes? Okay, so that you mean that probably just means that you are missing a connection somewhere and you just need to figure out where it is and fix it. So um, I'll get in there with you in just a second. Okay, let me just finish the thought in the video. So um, now we've got an understanding of how the, the very like, you know, subtle data nuances relate to creating geometry. And so... Um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of explanation that goes into like the first class. And then after that, you've pretty much got a basic knowledge of almost all of the data management, although it does get more complex down the road. But after we get through this kind of stuff to start off, you begin to understand and we can go into the fun stuff and start modeling everything, right? So now you kind of understand for the assignment how we're going to begin to analyze and model using point, line, and plane, right? Because we've just deconstructed it. And now we're reconstructing it into something else, right? Deconstruct, reconstruct, deconstruct, reconstruct. It's a circle that happens all the time. So the cool diagram that I wanted to get to is that I kind of envision Grasshopper operating something like this, right? You've got your start point, you know, which is like your concept, something like that. Like you, you sort of know how you want to approach something. And then you've got your product. Right? You want to get from there to there, and you've got a whole bunch of steps in order to get there. So I kind of look at it like you've got intermediate steps, and then every single one of these intermediate steps has to be deconstructed in order to be reconstructed into the next phase. So this has you know, little 
satellite data, whether it's point, line, and plane, or subdivisions of surfaces or something like that. So the path to get to your final product is kind of like you start from the beginning, you develop something, and you deconstruct it. And then you go to the next one, you develop it, and you deconstruct it. And then you go to the next one, you develop it, and you deconstruct it. And then you get to your final product, right? So it's sort of, it feels wonky at first. But once you understand, you know, the structure and the path that you're going for, it'll start to make a lot of sense to you. So that's the best diagram I've found for that so far. Is that confusing or intimidating to any of you? Yeah. So you'll, you'll get it. I mean, that's, I just did a really, I just did like the first level. You know, like that's one level of deconstruct, reconstruct. And if you think about it, when it comes to, you know, splitting up a panel like this into cells, it's pretty much exactly the same thing as developing a curtain wall. Right? Because a curtain wall is basically a surface that's subdivided into separate panels. And then you just put a profile around it that is called a mullion. And then you take the faces and you create thickness, and then you create a material of glass. And that's it. That's a curtain wall. So that's how it works, right? You've got like two steps. You deconstruct one into a couple different component parts, and then you have two paths where you create the profile for the mullion, and you create the, pro or the thickness for the glass, and then you just connect them back together, and you've got your, your curtain wall, right? So a um, little bit of a roundabout conversation there for a very simple idea. but. I want you to understand where you are in the landscape of the digital inception world. Okay, so um, let's take a, another short break on this and then uh, we'll get into some more modeling here in just a sec. Questions?